Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 7th. First up, this is from stgist.com. NASA confirms Curiosity Short Circuit Alien Planet Exploration 2 resumes soon. They're having a little problem with the drilling device on the uh, Curiosity's arm. It's uh, creating short circuit and giving them some problems. So right now what they've done is they put the craft to a total stop and they're going to uh, possibly try to find a solution. Rather hard to do sometimes when you're 140 million miles away, but nonetheless I guess they have some fail-safe devices set up in there to be able to uh, prevent a short circuit from actually damaging any equipment. And they're thinking that maybe it's the percussion part of the drill that's causing the short circuit, so they may have to just change their drilling technique. But uh, this Mars rover also has uh, this arm part that's doing the short circuit also has some other equipment onto it, on, it, on it too, the Mars Hand Lens Imager, a 2 megapixel camera, and it also has the Alpha Particle X-ray spectrometer on it too. So um, it's important to have this working so before they head out to their next destination, they want to get this all solved and taken care of. But uh, right now it's on its 919th sole, that is uh, Mars days. They're roughly about, I think, half hour longer than Earth days, but still way above and beyond uh, what its lifespan was supposed to be. So um, doing good, and uh, none of this, I, I guess, none of these problems that they're experiencing right now are going to keep the craft from. Uh, moving and going on to its next destination and uh, the majority of the rest of the tools are working just fine so this is just a minor glitch that they should be able to solve pretty easily. This next story it's uh, basically a YouTube video it's an artist named Paul Smith he's severely disabled he's been severely disabled since a child with cerebral palsy but he has used old technology a typewriter as a matter of fact to create some beautiful artworks and I'll just show you a few of them here and give you some excerpts of the video but uh, this guy, what he's able to accomplish is just phenomenal with typewriter technology. And uh, he uses a black ribbon for some of it and he uses colored ribbons for others. But he's able to just make some fantastic works of art. This kind of reminds me of the old days when we used to have the nine-pen ASCII printers. And we used to print out some kind of crude artwork and stuff like that using the ASCII characters. And, you know, you could produce maybe something that looked kind of like a cartoon character. Well, if you see in his artwork, it's uh, something like... Uh, fantastically detailed drawings is what he's able to produce with his uh, typewriter and uh, just a lot of patience and stuff like that so pretty fantastic if you get a chance to check out his video and next up this is a uh, subscriber uh, giveaway from a friend of mine Lone Star Rider and a supporter of the TDD report he didn't even ask me to uh, promote this but uh, I caught it that he was having a giveaway so I wanted to promote this and he's giving away some really cool outdoor type of gadgets uh, especially if you're a motorcycle camper or somebody that just likes camping or even somebody that just likes gadgets he's giving away uh, a really nice carrying case and then I'll let you watch his video to see the entire list of gadgets but there's quite a lot in this giveaway and if you want to get an entry in all he asks is that you subscribe to his channel and I will put the link to the video down below all the links to everything will be down below in the description box but subscribe to his channel and just simply make a comment saying I want in and you get one entry and if you watch his video he even gives you an opportunity to get more entries too by doing other different things but I would say at least get in with the chance of getting one entry because some of these gadgets that he's showing you are really cool um, and he also asked too if anybody has any extra types of gadgets to donate towards the giveaway too so if you have a, a small gadget that fits into the category of uh, bushcraft camping or you know just a general useful gadget um, get in contact with him but yeah I like to support the people that support my TDD report and uh, go check out Lone Star Rider and his 500 subscriber appreciation giveaway this next one was sent by Bob 1954 Shadow researchers make a 3D printed jet engine um, this is one that they're saying they don't they don't show it because I guess they haven't done it yet but they're saying they're gonna take this engine and actually put it to the test and see if it actually can hold up. I'm still curious about that myself too because the type of printing they use with these 3D printing it's to me it's maybe a little bit better than casting but to be able to hold up to the strain and stresses of a, a turning jet engine and a turbine and stuff like that but there's some cool pictures of it here and it's uh, just considered right now a proof of concept but they say they're gonna put it to the test and if I find out about it I'll, I'll see how it does come out on the test but this is kinda cool that you could actually just take in a 
maybe work on jet engines and make the parts just out of a, a 3D centering process where you just print them out basically, make uh, things a bit, little bit less expensive and possibly, I guess, maybe a little bit better in the consistency, maybe make them even more reliable. But yeah, this is from Computer World. And last up, um, if you were keeping track, some of you aren't, they just, some of you just uh, wait for me to talk about it in the TDD report, which is fine too. Um, according to BBC News, the, NAR the NASA's Dawn probe achieved orbit on Friday around Ceres, the dwarf planet. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to eventually, over time, going from now all the way down into November, they're going to slowly lower the orbit from quite high down to about 200 miles above the surface around November. It'll be about 200 miles above the surface, and they're going to be obviously imaging and making radar tracking images of the dwarf planet and things like that. But when they get down close enough to around 200 miles above the dwarf planet, that's when I'm thinking we're going to get some really good shots of things. I'm really curious myself about those uh, shiny, what look like almost like lights flashing from the planet. They say it may be reflective salts. Um, nobody knows for sure right now. They're just making guesses. But I'm thinking once we get down to about 200 feet above Ceres, we may be able to actually see what it's about. Um, right now, Ceres is going to last uh, about 14 months or so because they have, uh, I guess, two of the reaction wheels have died. I think there's a total of, what, usually three reaction wheels, sometimes four if they have a backup. I don't remember how many that has, but two of them are out of service already, so they're going to have to burn some of the fuel to keep it in stable orbit, but that'll still give them more than 14 months of time to be able to do this, and what they hope to do is put it in a stable orbit so that even after it runs out of fuel, it won't be able to orient itself anymore and may start tumbling, but it'll at least be in a stable orbit and remain around the um, dwarf planet maybe even for centuries, so that's kind of cool. So uh, if you get a chance, go and check these articles out. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.